Hey, how you going? It's Mr. Bill here today, and today I wanted to talk about how to make kicks and um, <clears throat> using operator. So basically, a friend contacted me and was just like, do you make your drums? And I was just like, yeah, I do. And um, he was just curious as to how I did it. So I was like, I'll just make a tutorial. And then um, I showed him the tutorial and he was like, oh man, you should totally do this on your channel. But I just never like thought to do it, I guess, because I thought like <coughs> making a kick was like a simple thing. But and I try to like stray away from the simple stuff and just do more complicated things because um, I find them more interesting. Uh, but today we're gonna make a kick. I'll show you how I make a kick using Operator and, and just Ableton stuff. We're just gonna use Ableton stuff. Um, usually I make my kicks using Kick2 actually. So this is a plugin made by Sonic Academy, I believe. And this is great, like it's a perfect kick drum making tool. Um, you know, you can do all this crazy stuff with, you know, the amp generation, like the decay, the pitch, like all this sort of stuff. And then you can add samples on top. If you watch the Collab Alliance videos, you would have seen me use this. Um, so basically, <clears throat> let's dissect what a kick actually is. So if I type in Mr. Bill kick here, this will bring up some kicks from my sample pack. And if I pull one in, it's a pretty nice sounding kick. Uh, let's figure out what it is. So pretty much you can see there's this huge transient at the start of it. Um, then there's a little bit like more body directly after the transient. So the, the first little click bit sounds like this. Then we have this body bit after it. And then we have this sort of tail at the end that sounds like this. So we sort of have this fat subby thing at the end, this weird mid-range like body thing at the st in the middle and then this huge clicky transient at the start. And you can hear them sort of go down pitch if we listen to each section individually. So this part, quite high in pitch, slightly lower and pretty much sub. So um, so that tells us that we need to put a pitch envelope on on the, a sine wave, basically. I mean, you could do it with any waveform, but if you like look at most kicks, you'll see that they kind of have this like pretty smooth sine wavy type of <clears throat> uh, thing to them. And that's pretty much because, you know, you want that to be just a nice clean sub at the end there. So we have a sine wave. If we put a pitch envelope on it, like just turn this on and turn the pitch envelope up, you get this do. So it's kind of applying a pitch um, over a short amount of time to the sine wave. If we bring the peak up, we get something like that. And if we bring the decay back, we get something more clicky and short like that. So that's a good start. Then what we want to do is we want to bring the sustain down on the envelope here because we don't want that just to keep sustaining forever like this. We want it to stop like that. And then we want to bring the decay back. And we want to play a lower note. You could do this with fixed frequency like this, um, but I like to do it with notes. Um, that way you can just choose what, what you're playing a bit more. Uh, so now it's just sort of a matter of taste. Um, we can kind of mess with this a little bit and uh, try and get it sounding like a like a decent kick uh, and then after we get it sounding like a decent kick we'll deal with the processing and I'll show you how I process something like this to sound like a kick okay that sounds pretty cool um, I like to use the OSR filter sometimes too so you get this sort of dirty um, what would you say? Um, so, sort of like this dirty low end a little bit. And then I like to use the envelope on the filter. So you get something like that. And then if you boost the resonance a lot in the low frequencies here, you can kind of get like um, more sub out of it and stuff. You gotta be careful with the amounts though, cause it can get a bit crazy. Um, and also another thing you wanna be careful of is uh, you don't wanna, um, have it sound like too clicky I think like this sounds a little too clicky because it, um, I think once you do that it starts to sound a bit like psytrance related um, and for the most part I would hope um, that my fans aren't psytrance fans um, well I, I kid I kid 
Sidetrance is pretty cool. Um, but for me personally, I just hate that clicky kick sound. So if you mess around with the pitch envelope, you can see it starts to get a little bit like more soft, soft edged. Um, so then what I would do, uh, there's a few things that I would use to process this. One is a saturator. Because you can just get it sounding a bit more dirty. And um, you start to get that sort of white noise on it too. And then it starts to sound a bit more like one of those SoundCloud kicks. Uh, and actually, perhaps we could use a wave shaper here too. That could be interesting. No, that was a terrible idea. Uh, glue compressor is another one that you probably have a bit of luck with. Especially with this soft clipping. You don't want to go too far because then it starts to sound like Gabba. And then maybe, maybe just a bit of dry wet. Um, but the main things that you're going to want after all of this is a multiband compressor an EQ <coughs> um, and a limiter so you obviously don't want it to ever clip uh, so you can bring back that click a bit with the multiband compressor so I'm just squashing the dynamics of the high frequencies and then turning them up so the high frequencies don't have as much dynamics basically they're more or less the same volume the whole time so you get something like that um, same with the mids and then the EQing is going to be sort of what sells us here a little more. I usually use Pro Q2, but for the for the sake of this, because I'm distributing this probably after this tutorial, um, I would like to do this with EQ8. So you can kind of just mess with the EQ and get it sounding how you like. And then basically with that processing there, we can sort of just mess with things on the on the kick now and make it sort of sound however we want. And at this point, what I would do is turn it into more of like a device that we can mess with to create, you know, um, uh, what would you say, like to, to quickly shape the kick that we want. So the first thing that we're going to want is to map the pitch envelope. We want the minimum here to be zero. Um, so it, a zero just sounds like that. And then as we turn it up, you can hear it gets more and more, um, like the envelope on the start of it gets more and more. Uh, the time control, we're probably going to want to have that there as well. So the, the time control on operator, it messes with all the envelopes at once. So uh, actually, if we have a negative value, what's that sound like? Mm, sounds all right, I guess. So the, the time control is going to pull all the envelopes in and out. So basically, like uh, if we turn the time control down here, it's going to mess, uh, it's going to pull the decay sustain release whatnot back of this you won't be able to see it happening but that's what it's doing and, and it'll do the same for the pitch envelope here and we're using both of those things so so it's a it's a good thing uh so there's that perhaps we would want like our own um dedicated envelope control as well so the time could be like the global control for both envelopes but then we would probably want to um mess with these individually also uh, also the sustain here that's going to be an important one because that's effectively our pitch so the, you know that's kind of so yeah that's that's pitch we definitely want that uh, and then i would also map the level here and the reason i would do that is because that's going to kind of be what makes it cleaner or less clean if we turn this all the way up you can hear it gets kind of distorted because it's pushing into the compressor and the saturator harder but if i turn this down it kind of gets more clean. Um, I mean, you could map the limiter there to sort of even out the volume a bit as well. Um, but I think that's probably fine. So that's our kick. And if we record these down um, and just mess with it a bit, you'll be able to sort of see what's going on here in kick world. So yeah, you can kind of like get an idea of what's going on there. It's basically, it's a kick. And then from there, you could probably render it and process it differently if you wanted to. Like you could take one of these in audio and then sort of just mess with the fades and whatnot. Get a little bit more control here. Cool. So um, yeah, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll clean this rack up. I'll probably like name all of these things nicely. Like for instance, um, 
let's call this like yeah uh pitch amt for pitch amount um like let's just actually call this pitch uh let's call this uh envelope time global uh shit um global env maybe global envelope let's call this one um osc envelope and then let's call this one pitch envelope uh, and then this one, we'll just call it like distortion maybe, I guess, because it technically it's the level, but kind of acts as a distortion for all intents and purposes. So um, usually what I do is I color these to sort of match um, whatever the thing is. So so pitch amount and pitch can both be pink. Uh, then all these envelope things could maybe be like yellow or something. Or actually um, just to match like the Mr. Bill theme, maybe we could go all the envelope crap could be like, you know, black. And then these things here could be cyan. And then that kind of looks more Mr. Billish. <laughs> and then maybe this could be gray or white. Um, and then these two here are just unused. So, I mean, I suppose we could map those to something. Um. Maybe the bass, that could be cool. Yeah, cool. Let's call this uh, color. Sorry if you get triggered about the way I spell color, but I'm from Australia and I believe we spell it this way. I think there might be a U in it. If we're, uh, maybe this clipping could be good. Yeah, screw it. Let's leave it on. And then uh, uh, range. Maybe we could um, do something with that too. So that just makes it a little bit more compressed sounding. So let's call this um, uh, comp. That makes sense. All right, cool. So we have a rack here and I'll distribute this rack for free through my website. Maybe for like, you trade me an email address or a social media post, I'll figure it out. Um, and yeah, uh, also if you want to get some drums that I've made, uh, there's a digital drums pack, sample pack on mrbillstunes.com. I will link to that in the description. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, have a good day. Cheers.